Southern Sudan will officially become an independent country in July. After more than 20 years of war with the North, the new country is virtually starting from scratch in its development. The European Union is one of the largest humanitarian donors in Southern Sudan, spending over 40 million euros in 2010 on projects in primary health care, water and sanitation, food security and shelter. The European Union works with local and international partners on the ground who, as they implement their projects, often face enormous challenges such as flooded roads and attacks by feuding groups. Roman Maihar is the European Union's technical expert on the ground in southern Sudan. He shares the challenges and triumphs of this historic time. People finally have got a chance to take you know, responsibility for their own lives uh, in their own hands, and that's something that is extremely exciting. And I think um, it is an opportunity, but it's also a challenge. More than two decades of war between North and South Sudan has taken its toll. Even now, there are still clashes over the disputed area of Abye, a challenge for newly independent southern Sudan. It's also a country whose development is starting pretty much from zero. Absolutely no infrastructure in many parts of the country. And when I t- talk about no infrastructure, we're talking about everything, about roads, about you know clinics, about uh, no access to water. Most southern Sudanese have limited access to the few facilities available for services such as health care, education, and water and sanitation. Only a small amount of food makes it to local markets, largely because of the lack of roads or roads flooded during the rainy season. A situation, the European Union's Maher says, hits children particularly hard. Malnutrition rates sometimes shoot up over 20%, which is dramatic. I mean, imagine it's basically, you know, every sixth person, you know, is, is malnourished. Uh, it's something that is absolutely unacceptable. Throughout the years, most agencies have concentrated on providing emergency relief efforts. But the focus is shifting slowly to long-term development in independent, post-war southern Sudan. Sometimes, you know, investment of something like perhaps 2,000 euro makes the, the difference for thousands of people in a village, and, and especially women who, who, who need to fetch water and, you know, do all the, all the work in the household. Meyer says the new southern Sudan is now on the world's radar screen. All of a sudden we are talking about you know, lots of uh, new resources that this country is going to have. Uh, to its disposal and new resources that needs to be spent and utilized wisely. And that's not necessarily an easy thing. It's not an easy thing in a country where but nothing or very little works so far, as I mentioned, when there is so little capacity. If development goes too quickly, it's very likely that uh, only some people benefit out of it, whereas the others are going to be left out. And that's something that can be handled and tackled through right policies and through, through, through awareness to start with. And I think that this is, um, as, as ECHO, as the agency responsible for humanitarian aid, that's something that we need to, we need to underline and talk about all the time. In May, the European Union pledged 200 million euros for long-term development initiatives in southern Sudan in the areas of education, health, agriculture, food security and democratic governance.